so hello guys my name is rukmit and in this video we are going to discuss about a gaussian distribution before we are going to discuss gaussian distribution let me discuss a random variable so basically in a machine learning or in a mathematics we have two type of random variable here first one is a continuous and the second one is a discrete so basically what does mean continuous random variable right random variable so basically a meaning of continuous random variable is we have a values in a continuous manner like 101 102 103 104 or dot also we have a uh, some floating points including it right like up to, up to n number so this will this is considered as a continuous random variable right and suppose we have a uh, values which is in a finite number of form 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 like the number of dice sorry number of uh, point in a dice like in a number uh, sorry we have a uh, in a particular rolling dice we have only six numbers and if we are working with a cat uh, sorry if we are working with a particular number which is not in a floating manner at that time we can say that this is a discrete random variable right so after that so now we are able to discuss gaussian distribution so basically gaussian distribution we can only plot a gaussian distribution or working on a gaussian distribution when we know about continuous random variable because continuous in the gaussian distribution we are only working with continuous random variable we are not working with we are not plotting a gaussian distribution with a discrete random variable right so that's why i taught you first about a, con a continuous random variable now i want you to tell you about a notation of a gaussian distribution so if you have a particular input column called x and you want to represent this point is represent a gaussian distribution and in this we have a mu this is a mu its means mean and another parameter is a sigma square that means it's a variance we can derive any gaussian distribution with the help of these two parameters first one is a mean and second one is a variance if we have only two uh, this two parameters we can design our gaussian distribution by our own right and we also we will implement how we will implement the gaussian distribution in this video later so under some conditions we can if we have uh, some random samples and if you are trying to increase it with the finite number of finite mean and variance then it's starting to converge into normal or gaussian distribution gaussian distribution with the increasing samples with the increasing samples right now it's time to identify that how this gaussian distribution look like suppose probably you work with uh, histogram if you seen my eda part and if you haven't seen my eda part then you can watch my eda part first and then you can come back to watch this okay so if you want to watch my eda part then please click but uh, please click on the i button uh, in that part i discuss about the histogram where i also discuss about the uh, whatever i told you before right so in the histogram uh, in the histogram we are going to generate graph like this if a particular column follow this bell curve follow this type of curve that means we can say that our distribution our column follow the gaussian distribution gaussian distribution and 
Gaussian distribution has another name called normal distribution. Right? And this curve is also denoted as a bell curve. So, now if we want to calculate the PDF on a Gaussian distribution, how we can calculate? I also discuss a PDF in a brief in my EDA section, and here I'm going to only show you a equation of PDF that would be like this under root 2 pi into e raised to minus 1 by 2 and x minus mu divided by sigma whole square so this both are standard deviation standard deviation where e is exponential and x is a value of a column value of a particular data point where mu is equal to mean okay so now that's all this is all about the Gaussian distribution uh, let me introduce a one topic so why we need to calculate the Gaussian distribution what is the use uses of it so first of all if we talk about the usage then it follow if you design a Gaussian distribution then it follow this rule 68 95 99.7 percent so this is the first standard deviation this is the second standard deviation this is the third standard deviation so if you plot a Gaussian distribution like this uh, yeah my drawing is not good so this is the first Standard, this is the area that covered by first standard deviation. This is the minus one standard deviation. This is the plus one standard deviation. So this is the second area that covered by second standard deviation, and this is the second standard deviation. So this is the third standard deviation, and this is the third standard deviation. So according to our research, if your data is follow the Gaussian distribution, that means your data point. 68% of your data points occur in this region and after that 95% of your data point occur in this region in the minus 2 standard deviation to minus 2 standard deviation to 2 standard deviation this is a sigma right so this is a sigma which represent std standard deviation and 99.7% your data is available in 3 standard deviation range right so after that whatever data point is uh, left out right you can consider them as outlier so as you can see that Gaussian distribution use with the help of this Gaussian distribution we can easily identify the outliers right okay so this is all about it all about the Gaussian distribution and uh, now we are going to implement our next part as you can see in this website uh, we have a two Gaussian distribution plot and if this is the mu this is the standard deviation for this plot and this is the mu uh, standard deviation for this plot right so if we increase the value of mu then it go to the, the whole plot go to the left side sorry right side and if we decrease the value of mu then means it goes uh, goes to the left side right and if we increase the value of the standard deviation then the graph will be flatter it means uh, our data is well separated and uh, that's not a good if we have a, if we have a uh, flatted gaussian distribution plot then uh, in the classification we will face the problem or there are high chance to uh, misclassify our data so if our Gaussian distribution sorry if our plot is like this and which cover which in a small region we have all the data points 
that's good because uh, there is a small possibility to uh, uh, misclassify your points right so thank you for watching so that's all for now